Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another Prophecy in the News daily update. It's May the 4th, a Friday, and we have a very special guest in studio with us today. His name is Paul Wilkinson. He comes to us from England. Hi, Paul. Hello, Gary. It's nice to be here. Good to have you here at Prophecy in the News. Paul Wilkinson, I should say Dr. Paul Wilkinson, has written For Zion's Sake, Christian Zionism and the Role of John Nelson Darby. And also, he has put together this booklet, and I want to start with this booklet. It's called The Church at Christ's Checkpoint, uh, and it's dated uh, Bethlehem, March 5th through 9th, 2012. Uh, let's talk about Paul's work, and let's talk about that conference in Bethlehem. And Paul, bring us up to speed, if you will. Okay, well, um, I'm the associate minister at Hazel Grove for Gospel Church in a town called Stockport, just outside Manchester in the north of England. Mm -hmm. uh, for many years as a, as a fellowship, uh, we have stood with Israel uh, based on our understanding of the Word of God, that God has made an everlasting covenant with the Jewish people. And, and so in standing with Israel, we pray for the salvation of the Jewish people. We stand against anti-Semitism as the Lord enables us. We teach, we preach, we write, myself and my pastor, Andrew Robinson, against the, the age-old heresy of replacement theology, which teaches that God has rejected Israel because Israel rejected the Messiah and replaced Israel with the church. So the church has been erroneously referred to as the new Israel and the true Israel. And so that's something of, of our history as a church, how we have stood with Israel. And we believe very much so that uh, the the reestablishment of the modern state of Israel in 1948 was was a miracle, a modern day miracle, mm -hmm. brought about by the hand of God at work amongst the nations, bringing about the fulfilment of His prophetic word. Now, at the beginning of of this year, my pastor felt very strongly on his heart that the Lord was wanting me to go to this conference in Bethlehem that was being headlined as the Christ at the Checkpoint Conference, the second Christ at the Checkpoint Conference. It was being convened from the 5th to the 9th of March in Bethlehem, and it was building upon the first Christ at the Checkpoint Conference in 2010. I went there not as a sympathizer, but as, a, as an observer to report firsthand on what was being said and what was being done in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, because this conference was portrayed as an evangelical Christian conference, uh, I went there to report upon this, and, and since my attendance at the Bethlehem Conference, I've been putting this document together with the help of my pastor. Uh, we've, we've worked on this to, to alert, to warn the church, the wider evangelical church, as to what is going on in, this, um, you know, in, this, in these days in which we are living. And so, <clears throat> this booklet is the result. It's, it documents uh, uh, the Christ at the Checkpoint meeting that took place in 2012. A and the bottom line is this. There is a sizable faction of the church today that does not believe that the state of modern Israel is legitimate. I guess that's probably the bottom line. Absolutely. You know, the, the, the men that took the platform in Bethlehem in included significant evangelical leaders like Stephen Sizer, an Anglican vicar in England, uh, Gary Burge, professor of New Testament, Wheaton College, Illinois, uh, Colin Chapman, uh, Tony Campolo, uh, very well known here in the States, mm -hmm. John Ortberg, uh, Joel Hunter, evangelical pastor in Florida, who is also a spiritual advisor to Barack Obama, uh, the chairman of the World Evangelical Alliance, which claims to represent 600 million evangelicals around the world. Mm. The World Council of Churches was represented, World Vision was represented, and they have all bought into the Palestinian revisionist lie, creating this myth that there has been such a, an entity as a, a Palestinian nation, a Palestinian people with a Palestinian heritage, culture, language. There's been no such thing. That is uh, a, a fiction that has been exploited. It was exploited by Yasser Arafat in the 1960s to create this idea that Israel, the, the, the nation of Israel was a, a political accident, that the early Jewish settlers that mm. came in the 19, late 19th century and early 20th centuries were stealing Palestinian land. Uh, this was a lie, and it's been propagated amongst the nations who bought into this. And sadly, um, many of the men I've just mentioned that were at the Christ at the Checkpoint Conference um, propagate that lie through their 
websites, through their books, mm. and they did so in, in Bethlehem. Now, you were telling me that they even refer to Jesus as a Palestinian, and that the trip of Mary and Joseph uh, down to Bethlehem as, uh, as being a, a trip made by Palestinian refugees. And so they put a Palestinian spin uh, on the New Testament. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the very name Palestine was invented by Emperor Hadrian back in AD 135 as a way of just breaking the connection between the Jewish people and, and the land. So he came up with the name Syria-Palestina, um, a, a direct uh, derivative of the, the ancient name of Philistia. Um, and, and that was clearly calculated to, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to <coughs> break that link. And so the land of Israel, Canaan formerly, Israel as it was named by the Lord, became known for centuries as Palestine. But there was never a state of Palestine. Jerusalem was never the capital of a Palestinian state. And in fact, up until 1948, when Israel became an independent sovereign state again, praise the Lord, um, the, ev everybody that lived in the land, be they Arab or be they Jewish, was a Palestinian. So you had the Palestine Symphony Orchestra that was a Jewish orchestra. You had the Palestine Post, the newspaper, that was the Jewish newspaper. But of course, when Israel became a state again, that was an anathema to the Islamic world because sure. the land of Israel had been conquered by Islamic regimes down through the history. And according to Islamic teaching, once a nation has been conquered for Islam, for Allah, it remains Islamic. And so there you had in the very heart of the Islamic world a Jewish state. I mean, that was, that was such an event of, of such magnitude that it awoke the Islamic giant. And, and ever since, they, they have tried, mm. nations have tried to wipe out the Jewish state. And they're trying to do mm. it to this, to this very day. Well, Paul, I can sense your passion there is searching for just the right term to talk about the, the appalling nature uh, of what's happening right now. Uh, that passion, by the way, comes through his book. Uh, he's a scholar. Uh, this book is very heavily documented. In one sense, it's historical. In another sense, it is reporting on a phenomenon that's taking place right now. That phenomenon is the, the contest between uh, Christian Zionism and a kind of uh, a Palestinian national movement, if you will, to take that land for Islam once and for all. For Zion's sake, Christian Zionism and the role of John Nelson Darby. Again, it's a very scholarly work, very erudite, and at the same time you'll sense an excitement that flows through the pages of the book, very readable. Uh, it's uh, Paul Wilkinson's uh, master work up to this point. I, I proudly own a copy, have for quite a while, and the copy that I have at home has a number of bookmarks in it, as is my custom. So I use it and I love it. We're going to make this book available to you for $39.95, but not just the book alone. With it, we're going to include the booklet we spoke of earlier, The Church at Christ's Checkpoint, and also two one-hour DVDs, Darby and Christian Zionism and Christian Palestinianism. Uh, the booklet and the DVDs are yours absolutely free when you order the book for $39.95 plus shipping and handling. It's the Paul Wilkinson package. You have the 800 number on your screen right now. Please call. Order the book. You will love the book and you'll be edified by the book. And uh, Paul, uh, any final words? Uh, what are you going to be doing in the future? Well, I don't know. I mean, none of us know. The Lord could come back today and, and take us to be with himself. So along with my church, who I represent today. I'm simply an, ad, um, an ambassador for Hazel Grove for Gospel Church. Yeah. We are just seeking to serve the Lord. And I think it's very important to just to make this point, you know, why we're talking about Israel, why we're talking about Christian Zionism, Christian Palestinianism, those in the evangelical church that are joining hands with the Islamic world. Um, because the, the, the crucial, critical issue is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. And the first <clears throat> stage of that second coming is the rapture, the long-promised rapture of the church, the bride of Christ. Jesus yeah. is coming back for his church. And it was my yeah. pastor who really felt very strongly that on, that on the front cover of the book for Zion's sake should be written the words, laying the foundation for Christ's return. 
We, have a, we had a bit of a battle with our publishers to get those words written on the front cover. But that is what the book is about. Laying the foundation for Christ's return. Going back to the Bible, looking at what God's agenda is for this world, for Israel, for Jerusalem, and for his church. And, and that's, that's our primary calling as, as, as believers in Christ, is to help the church to make herself ready for the heavenly bridegroom. For very soon, the trumpet call will sound, and the voice of the archangel shall be heard, and the Lord Jesus will catch us up, the dead in Christ first, and then we who are alive and are left will be caught up with them to be with the Lord in the air. It's nice to know that that, uh, that good news is being taught in England as well as America, and pray for the church there in England. And by the way, when you get one of these DVDs, uh, that you'll, you'll see uh, right at the top of the DVD, Hazel Grove Full Gospel Church. That's his church. And it's, it's lovely to know that the doctrine of eminency is alive and well in that little church in England. The doctrine of eminency, you know, if you believe in the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ, somehow it will stimulate you to search the scriptures even more uh, passionately than, than you ever have before. So uh, keep looking up, everybody. Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm.